early bottles are free blown. They were blown into the air, held on a glass rod called a pommel rod, shaped with a wooden paddle, and the pommel rod snapped off. Free blown bottles don't have any seams. This one here was dug, this one here was came out of the river in Richmond. It's called an onion after its shape. Here's a Hogarth or a mallet. This is probably 1740, 1760. This is the oldest intact bottle I know of from Fredericksburg, and it came from the island. It washed up on the island behind us. This one was dug down below the city after they dredged the river in 1947. This was picked up in the spoils piles. This one here is a little newer, a little smaller, probably 1820, 1830. But these are all free blown. There's no seams in them. Now, right around 1814, 1815, a fellow invented a mold where you blew the bottle into the mold, held it on a pommel rod, and when you pulled it off, you had the mold marks. And usually when you see the mold marks are after 1815, 1820. And by mold marks, you'll see the seam going up the shoulder like this. This was made in a mold as opposed to being free blown and shaped out of the air. Here's some of our typical free blown ones. These are medicine bottles dug out of the city. There's no seam in them. And basically, they would hold it on a glass rod called a pommel rod, blow in this end, cut it off, shape it, and then the bottle was done. The discoloration, the glass is actually oxidizing. These have been in the ground so long that the glass is actually starting to deteriorate. Some people like it, some people don't. If you want to get rid of it, you can spray end dust down there or coat it with baby oil, and that'll make it look like a shiny new bottle. When you rinse it off, you'll get the oxidization again. These are medicine bottles. They held things like vermifuge and open deldox and laudanums, which was basically opium and alcohol. But these are free-blown medicine bottles. This one was probably a vinegar bottle or an oil bottle. Again, free-blown, so that would make him probably, because he's a nice small one, I would say he's probably 1810, 1820. Not everybody right at 1815 started blowing him into molds. Things just gradually changed. So, as I give off of a number, that doesn't mean everybody did it right then, but it's just kind of a good general rule of the thumb. This one here is called a chestnut. America and England were, England and France were fighting. I think it was Jefferson said that we're not trading with anybody, so the American bottle glass makers started blowing their old bottles. This is an unusual one with a handle, but uh, these I've heard to refer to as chestnut flask. In 1800-1810, they started blowing them into moles, but you still held onto the pommel. You still had a pommel rod, P-O-N-T-I-L. And when you snapped that off, you got a pommel scar. They did this up until 1860, so anytime you see this on the bottom of a bottle, it's 1860 or earlier. So if you're at a yard sale or a junk shop and you see a bottle with a scar on the bottom and you can buy it for 50 cents or a dollar, I would. You could probably take it down the street and sell it for 10 or 15 dollars. Now the reason you held onto the bottle was you had to polish the top. The technology wasn't good enough to pop them out of the molds. You still had to shape the top. And when you shape the top, the seam disappears. The mold seam goes up, but then it disappears because you had to polish the top. These three dug out of Civil War camps. They're a three-piece mold. Three-piece mold is from 1810 to about 1880. The seam here. Pack. And then you have the two seams up on either side. So you have the bottom piece and then the two pieces put together. This, is, this kind of seam is usually from 1810 to 1880. This one was dug out of a Civil War camp. And my friend Charlie Dyke digs, and he says if you have the little bump on the bottom, that's usually indicative of a bottle from the Civil War period. There's a little tiny Coming knot from on the, the Civil bottom. War camps, umbrella inkwells, all of them pommel scarred, dark gray and scar on the bottom of the bottle. You get the remark of the iron pommel where they pulled it off, and sometimes they would put graphite on the iron pommel. And when you remove the iron pommel, it left a graphite pommel scar. But these are transitional. They're getting ready to lose the pommel mark. They're, they're, they're getting ready to hold them with the clamp. Let's go okay, over here just so we can talk. I've kind of just been kind of hitting and missing over there, mainly talking about free blown ones. Uh, and again, the free blown ones, rarely will you see those. Those are late 16, early 1700 sites. Most of the stuff in the Fredericksburg area is the early 1800s, late 17, early 1800s, and then you get into the Civil War and all their wine and whiskey and medicine bottles and stuff. So we're going to kind of talk about the mold seamed ones. Now, again, this one, you can even feel the wooden mold. You can feel where they carve the wooden mold. It has little bumps on the side, and you can feel where they carve the wooden mold that they blew it in. Now, the reason you held the pommel rod, as I mentioned earlier, was you had to shape the top and the seam disappears. Well, 
Right around 1800, they invented a clamp which held the bottom of the bottle. And again, you had to hold the bottle so you could shape the top. As a result of this clamp, the seam, dis the, the uh, pommel scar disappears. So again, now we know this is after 1860 because there's no pommel scar. But the seam disappears, so they still polish the top. That means it's before it 1900. Right at 1900, they invented the automatic bottle making machine where you pop the bottle out of the mold, you no longer had to polish the top, and as a result, the seam goes over the top. So if the seam goes over the top, it's after 1900 if it disappears. These guys are from the Civil War camps. Again, the bigger they are, the older they are. This is probably 1820, 1830, and then about 1850 you get to this size, and then in 1860 you get to the regular patent whiskeys like we had. It's here on the bottom randomly. If you look at this one, the seam goes right over the top. He's after 1900. That's how you tell. This guy here looks kind of old. It's a strap flask, typical of, of the late 1800s, but the seam goes over the top, so I know he's after 1900. Now, these are the Arlington Bottling Company, Charles Jacobson Proprietor, Washington, D.C., Register. Now the reason I have them up, this is the same bottle, but they're different. This is a crimp top, this is a blob top. Matter of fact, I suspect this one might have been a blob top and they took the blob top off and put the crimp top on top of it because you can feel kind of a hump here where it's actually been added on. They invented the crimp top in 1893, when you think of the little cap. I always thought of them 1930s or 1940s, but it went back to 1893. So anytime you see this bottle, it's after 1893. Anytime you see this called a blob top, it's before 1893. But some of the early medicine bottles, notice most of the free-blown ones, and then in the early 1800s they start blowing them into the molds. But there are some of your little varieties of your stonewares, your inkwells and your bulk, bulk inks and little food jars. It probably had a cork or a piece of wax paper with a string around it. They had wax paper in colonial times. 1886, the original Coca-Cola syrup invented in Atlanta. 1895, first bottle, straight-sided, notice blob top, so they didn't have the crimp top yet. 1900, crimp top introduced, crown cap, no standard inscription or color, pale green or beer bottle, brown used. 1915, fluted May West style. 1916, the new pale green bottle, first issued. 1918, the bottler's name and town required to be embossed on the bottom. 1919, the manufacturer's mark and date embossed on the bottle for the first time. Chat 26, meaning Chattanooga Glass Company, 1926. 1923 to 24, embossed patent November 16, 1915, changed to December 25, 1923. 1933, the manufacturer's mark and mold cavity mark moved from the lower wall to a point above the constriction, in other words, a point up here. 1937, bottles embossed, patented, 105529. 1951, bottles embossed, trademark, register, U.S. Patents Office, manufacturer's mark moved to the base. In 1957, Coca-Cola was in white. So just going along with this, these are Fredericksburg Coca-Cola bottles. Here's your straight-sided Coca-Cola Bottling Works, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Now I know this is before 1914 because in 1915, they invented the May West or the bulb styles, and it's after 1893 because it's a crimp top. So this guy here is sometime between 1893 and 1915. I just thought about it, it'd be fun to talk about bottles, and I have so many people come in and they say, how can you tell about this bottle or that bottle? You know, how, how can you tell? So, again, I just say if you see the pommel scar, it's 1860 or earlier. If you see the seam go over the top, it's after 1900, and if you see a crimp top like this, it's after 1893. But those are just good general rules of the thumb, so now everybody theoretically is a bottle expert.